What's the most worst thing you've ever seen happen at a wedding? Story 1. I was once invited to a wedding held in the UK. I arrived at the church about 20 minutes early and it was locked. No one there. After a few minutes, a couple of other guests arrived. After about half an hour, a guy arrived to unlock the church and a lady started to set up flowers. Easily over an hour after the supposed beginning of the service, other guests started to arrive. Then the bride and groom. Then, as the service went on, including well after the bride and groom had walked down the aisle, guests continued to arrive and shuffle about the church taking their places, saying hello to other guests, etc. At the end of the service, we all had to drive about 30 minutes to a reception elsewhere. We arrived there a good two hours before the wedding party. After the event, the bride realized that she'd sent the same invitation to her English and guests and asked what time we got to the church. Apparently, guests are traditionally so late to weddings that it's usual to put a false start time on them, which in turn leads to everyone intentionally getting there well after the time they're given. However, the real moment was at the reception where the bride and groom danced as guests approached one by one to shower them with money, make it rain style. Again, apparently not unusual at a wedding, but 100% not what I'd expected. It was a great wedding. It just would have been handy to know when to get there. Story 2. My aunt was a justice of the peace and officiated a wedding where seven women were wearing bridal dresses. Not white dresses, full-on wedding dresses with accessories. Turned out the bride was very shy and hated to be the center of attention, but also wanted to wear a bridal dress for her groom. Her friends promised to wear their bridal dresses if she would wear one, and so they did. Story 3. A male relative of mine got married. His mother passed away a couple of weeks before the ceremony. His widowed father showed up to the wedding with his new girlfriend, who was wearing the dead mother's clothes. I mean the dress she picked out for the wedding, her shoes and jewelry. Our whole family was shocked. They spent the whole day telling everyone they saw that it would have been a shame to not use it, since it was such a happy coincidence that his late wife and new girlfriend shared the same size. Needless to say, the groom loves his wife but doesn't like to talk about the wedding. Story 4. At my wedding, one of the caterer attendants decided to take my husband and his groomsman's offer of a few swigs of whiskeys before the ceremony on the side of the building. The attendant was younger, at least 21 but not much older, and was drunk AF. He then got fired and decided to join our reception party and get more drinks. He jumped in front of all the guys to catch the garter. I was really upset at the time, but I found a candid photo of the moment he caught the garter, and he did a whole peach air kick and was so disheveled it made me laugh. Story 5. Was invited to a co-worker's wedding. My co-worker was the bride, and she was a really funny, no-nonsense New York girl. The priest who was supposed to officiate the wedding was an old family friend but he fell ill so they had to send out another priest to do the wedding ceremony. The ceremony starts and the new replacement priest launches into this 15-minute long sermon about how, according to God, the woman is supposed to be subservient to the man. This is not the bride's vibe at all and all of us are sitting there simply just stunned at what the priest was saying waiting for the bride to snap and punch the dude in the throat. To her credit, she just stood there and listened, but you could tell she was furious. I'll never forget the scene immediately afterwards as the bride stood there crying and a bunch of family members had the priest basically cornered chewing his peach out for ruining the wedding. Story 6. I knew a girl who did photography on the side. She was hired to a wedding on the Gold Coast, Australia. The Gold Coast has a reputation for having very beautiful beaches but very trashy people. Think Jersey Shore types. Anyway, the bride, groom, bridesmaids, and groomsmen are all getting ready in the same room. The photographer I knew was told the boys had their bucks party, bachelor party, stag do the night before, and that they were still a little drunk. They decided it would be a good idea to do some candy to try and wake up a bit. Also by some candy, I mean a lot. The photographer is trying to get some nice photos, but it's hard when there are illicit sweets in every and the men are too rowdy to sit still. She tells the bride that it's a little difficult to get decent shots, so the bride asks the boys stop taking sweets for a minute. The groom yells, shut up, unpleasant, and just keeps snorting. His groomsmen just laugh. Story 7. I attended my cousin's second wedding with my grandparents and mom. I was 12 years old. It was a fancy event. My cousin, the groom, sang to the bride. His bandmates performed during the night. When it was time to leave, my cousin wanted to walk our grandmother out and help get her in the car. I was already in the back seat. My cousin said he forgot to kiss me goodbye. He opened my car door and slipped his hand under my dress and grabbed at my privates as he kissed me. I was in total shock. Even if I told my mom, she wouldn't have believed me. For years after that, I was dodging his advances at our family events. When I was 50 years old, I decided to tell my mom. No surprise, she just kind of shrugged it off. Story 8. Couple was conservative, evangelical Christian. The bride had always been a Christian, but the groom had converted sometime in his mid to late 20s. As such, the bride was a virgin and the groom was not. Not a big deal. Except every single one of his groomsmen brought it up during their speeches. 
Like, they felt the need to let everyone know that the groom had gotten laid before and now got to bang a virgin. It was truly gross. Story 9. Seen it twice. At the reception, the older unmarried sister of the bride or groom has to dance in a hog feeding trough by themselves in front of everyone because their younger sibling got married before them. All the family, friends, guests gather around them to laugh and heckle. We couldn't help but feel bad for them, especially the poor big sister who was a little on the heavier side. Sorry about your self-esteem, I guess. Story 10. The groom's father was drunk before the ceremony and got worse as the evening progressed. During the reception, the groom's mother locked herself in the bathroom while other women tried to coax her to come out. Several people on the bride's side were also fighting. I was asked to drive a terrified old lady home. The couple divorced soon after. Story 11. I was back home to MC my cousin's wedding to his very uptight bride about 15 hour ago. She's so uptight because her family is certifiably insane, and she clings desperately to normalcy like it's a life raft. Sometimes she clings a bit too hard and cracks under the pressure. Well, the groom's dad and the bride get into a screaming match at the rehearsal. The minister refuses to move forward with the wedding until they do some emergency on-site counseling. The rest of the wedding party is asked to leave. We wait for hours across the street at a coffee shop until we're told to head to the reception venue. We had a dinner scheduled and we're supposed to finish decorating. The bridal party and family finally show up just as the staff is about to lock us out for the night. We've had no dinner, no rehearsal, and the reception isn't set up properly. I leave and meet an old friend for a late dinner. The next morning I arrive at the church, not entirely sure there's going even be a wedding. We do an impromptu rehearsal with the minister, and I head down to the basement to use the washroom before the guests start to arrive. There's a weird, sickly, sweet, chemically smell down there. I walk into the ladies' room and find the bride's father with a crack pipe in his hand. Settling his nerves, I guess? This sets the vibe for the rest of the day. The ceremony goes surprisingly well, and we head to the reception. The hotel had just opened that week. This is the very first wedding they've held, and they're clearly not ready yet. Only one elevator is operational, and the staff isn't really trained. The elevator broke, and the staff couldn't figure out how to get food down from the kitchen to the ballroom so they just stopped food service halfway through the meal. The DJ played the wrong song for the first dance, and the bride broke down in tears, ran out, and didn't come back for an hour. The bartender kept setting up unlimited shots along the whole bar and leaving open bottles for guests to take, many of whom haven't eaten. I, the MC, start projectile vomiting because both my friend and I got horrendous food poisoning from our dinner the night before. I was in a long gown and would go upstairs to a bathroom away from the party, undress, puke my guts out, redress, Go back to complete part of the itinerary and repeat. In the meantime, everyone who wasn't violently nauseous was getting absolutely hammered. The night culminated with my uncle punching his pregnant daughter in the face because she wouldn't give him his motorcycle keys to ride away drunk. He then fell into a large sculpture and smashed it, causing the police to be called. He, of course, tried to fight the police. The wedding was shut down because of the excess drunkenness just before midnight. I went back to my parents' place and threw up for three more days. And before you ask... Yes, the bride and groom are still happily married. They have three kids. She dresses them like little Instagram models and is a wannabe mom fluencer. They make TikToks. Story 12. Everyone's going to say a fight, and those are very much. However, the fight I witnessed was between a man and a woman. Sure, notable. However, the woman had a previous career as a mud wrestler and had since moved on to bodybuilding. Also, the man she was fighting was her brother, who was three weeks out of rehab. You may have witnessed a fight at a wedding, but I witnessed an peach kicking the likes of which I have never, ever seen. That woman took him down and beat his peach brutally and decisively, in heels and a tight dress. When the cops came and both were being dragged off in cuffs, she was able to get herself, in heels, mind you, out of the main hall, down the front stairs and into the cruiser, with absolute grace and form. Her brother had to be carried with occasional drops of blood-soaked tissue falling off behind him. Story 13. Not particularly, but I thought it was hilarious. At our wedding, there was a lot of booze and an excellent time was had by all. A friend of mine, about 25F, had had a skinful, went upstairs to find a quiet bathroom to have a tactical vomit, came back downstairs, and as she was halfway down the stairs, she tripped, rolled quite gracefully down the stairs, continued rolling when she got to the bottom, and stopped after a few yards when she bumped into my mother-in-law's legs. My friend was lying flat on her back, and being the well-brought-up girl she was, looked straight into my mother-in-law's eyes and said, I'd just like to say what a wonderful wedding this is. And didn't the bride look beautiful? Then she passed out. Story 14. Everybody in the ceremony was standing on a raised platform, like four feet off the ground. One of the groomsmen, the bride's brother, was standing with his knees locked. In the army, they tell you not to do that because you end up fainting. He fainted and toppled off the platform. He landed on his head, 
concussion, skull fracture, broken orbit, and cheekbone, other messy stuff. He got taken away in an ambulance. The rest of the bridal party got into cars and went to the hospital in full wedding regalia to sit in the ER waiting room. I don't remember the timing, but it must have happened after the impressive clergyman said, man and wife, because the wedding happened and they're still happily married. Oh yeah, and brother is fully recovered. Story 15. The kid bearing the ring arrived at the altar with no ring on the little pillow. Quick-thinking father of the groom substituted his own wedding ring. The ring was never found. Later in the ceremony, the organist passed out slumped on the keyboard, treating us all to a glorious sustained cluster chord on the pipe organ. Story 16. Long ago, I worked at a banquet hall and witnessed a fully NASCAR-themed wedding. During the reception, they played the audio of the proposal going out over the PA at the track. It was fully unintelligible. Bassist Gabaga Mary Mez wrote, Vroom. Other highlights were the owner locking himself in his office to avoid the bride's father because he was threatening him to haggle on the costs. In the end, we had to call the police because the bride and gown climbed over the bar to steal more sweet, sweet MGD after we had closed the taps and the event was over. Story 17. Might be late to this, but I've been working hotels for almost 20 years. Seen a lot of weddings. One of the craziest was a really redneck one, but they had an open bar, so problems happened. One family insulted another. It wasn't even an insult, really. It was over a football game. Little guy was talking a lot of smack, and this big guy just grabs a bottle of beer and whacks the little guy across the dome hard. He goes down, and it happens so fast. Big guy realized he messed up up and runs with his girl. About 30 minutes go by, and the cops finally come. The ambulance guys said he was pretty much dead instantly. Cops take statements. Later that night, while we were cleaning up, a detective comes by and rips out the carpet. They eventually catch the guy a few states over. I had to ID him. Again, this was one of the crazier ones. I'll have to tell you about the seashell killer next. Story 18. I conducted a wedding at the bride's parents' house. It was where she grew up. The garden backed onto a field. The bride had told me that she asked the farmer if the cows could be in the field on her wedding day so she could see them. He was happy to oblige. Day of the wedding, I'm there early as you do, and I see the farmer moving the cows into the field. I move away from the marquee to look at the cows, and the farmer comes over to the fence where I am. He says to me, all pleased, the wife and I are invited to the reception. I tell him that's lovely, and I'm sure he'll have a great time, and I mention how pretty the cows are, and he goes, Oh, bride wanted them in the field for the wedding, and I said to them, Ladies, you've been invited to a wedding. You've got to look your best. So I power hose them. I thought that was hilarious. And brilliant. Lowell. Story 19. This actually happened. DJD, a rich family wedding. 400 person on their massive property, under a huge tent. Though the rich daughter married an indigenous Canadian gent. It was easily 45 OC with the humidity that day. Got heat stroke setting up. Boss told me to finish or I was fired. Figured it was my last gig because I was done at that point. Seemed like nice enough guy. They looked like an adorable couple. Bride's dad was a total condescending banana to staff and me the whole day and evening. Overall, there was an obvious tension the entire night though. At some point, someone on one family side said something to someone else about 1 a.m. and a massive brawl started. This wasn't teens fighting, but 45. 50-year-old white bankers throwing down with stacked farm working and reservation living people. It was wild. You're going to ask, did I the music? F no. I was fed up. Felt like peach and saw an opportunity, so I threw on kung fu fighting and watched this brawl go down. Multiple cop cars, 7, 10, multiple arrests. Didn't get paid. Don't care. Worth it. The rich dad may have gained a son, but he definitely lost that fight and a few teeth that day. Eat it. I was asked via DM what was said. Not sure who said something first, but I do know after asking during teardown that punches were thrown, when one of the bride's uncles told the groom's brother something around the vein of, why don't you go back to the res to huff a leader? So incredibly cow. I'd have thrown down at that point too if I were him. So, yeah. Rich asshole's gonna unpleasant person. Edit two. To confirm the hockey player who commented on the fight winners, yay the banker boys got their asses beat son. Let me tell you, Son, son, son. Woo boy. Story 20. My wedding, two things, one godbrother one, blew out a candle at the table super hard, causing the wax to blow back in his face land all over his mustache and beard where it hardened on his face. Everyone who saw it laughed and no one attempted to help him remove it. He was too drunk to notice. Two, went next door to the empty conference room and pissed on the track where the wires were plugged in the floor for the equipment. This idiot thought he was in a really nice bathroom. We were at a resort in Mexico. I thought he was going to get arrested, but they were cool. Just took him back to his room. He remembered nothing the next day. Story 21. I was a wedding caterer. The venue I worked at had a strict rule about no outside alcohol. I worked with my mom and she noticed that the groom and groomsmen were extremely intoxicated very early on in the day. 
She went in their rooms and found a bunch of moonshine and put it behind the bar, but it was too late. The groom had to be helped to the altar to marry his pregnant wife. Poor thing. After dinner, I was clearing plates and I walked outside where the groom immediately hit on me. I was 16 and just turned right around and went back inside. Story 22. At my sister's wedding reception, it was at this banquet hall where another wedding was also going on. The place was split in half, so two events were happening. The two sections were sealed off, but smokers went outside, and after five hours of open bar, we started mingling. I went to their side and some came over to our side. All was fine until some college football rivalry thing broke out and the guests started fighting. People were getting glassed, tackled, stomped, etc. My sister's side was a bunch of drunk Penn State bros versus I can't remember the rival team. We had to call several ambulances. I, having no dog in the fight, just went to their reception and was delighted that they had a sushi chef and better liquor. Made a lot of new friends that night from watching them go at it. Those college football bros are dumb AF IMO, but I admire their dedication. Story 23. The bride's mother showed up, refused to sit at the table she was assigned to, and rearranged some seating to accommodate her other daughter and herself. She ensured she was at the table closest to the exit. She refused to talk to the groom's family and gave dirty looks to the bride's father and stepmother. She loudly exclaimed that the turkey that was served was the fries, and most overcooked thing she'd ever eaten, and the wine selection was atrocious. She doesn't even drink wine. The second the bride's father got up to make a speech, she got up and silently left, taking the bride's younger sister with her. Two weeks later, the bride, the groom, the groom's mother, and the bride's grandmother all got nasty letters about how disgusting the whole event was, and that she was ashamed to be acquainted with them. I was the bride, she was my mother. Now she's just Kathy. Story 24. They ignored the entire group of wedding guests and only talked, took pics with their bridesmaids' groomsmen. Then, the second the wedding ceremony was over, they grabbed a whiskey bottle and proceeded to drink from same bottle while passing around to their wedding group. Everyone at that wedding was pissed they spent time money to even go. It was like a white trash sorority party. Story 25. My sister-in-law wore an unconventional wedding dress, a short skirt, halter top with bare midriff and fairy wings. It was very cute. She came over to our table to say hello during the reception and my great-aunt pulled up her skirt to see what she was wearing underneath, exposing her underwear to the table and possibly the rest of the room. My sister-in-law just laughed it off, probably because my aunt was very old. Still, I couldn't believe she did that. Story 26. I was the DJ at my friend's daughter's wedding. The parents were divorced and nobody got along with the ex-wife. Wristbands were handed out to people that were able to get free drinks at the bar. The bride's mother didn't get one because everyone knew she was unstable. She shows up, tries to get a free drink, and gets denied. She then tries to pull the, do you know who I am card? Still no free drink. I am not sure what happened next, but some argument started. Pushing, shoving people moving outside. I see the mother trying to drive away and someone reaching through the window trying to choke her with her seatbelt. Story 27. Don't mean stuff that isn't to your taste. Or there was a cringe first dance. I mean proper OMFG situations. I'll go first. A female friend of the groom known to be a bit, very, volatile when drunk and was generally known to be extremely unstable, called the bride a unpleasant before the meal and screamed abuse at the bridesmaids and then curled a cow at the top of the stairs in the hotel venue. Of course, she was frog-marched out of there and never showed her face at her work again, where she knew the groom from. Story 28. Bride had two MOHs, one matron, one maid, and groom had one best man. Groom has anxiety issues, but an all-around awesome human as is his wife, the bride. So the MOHs knew to keep the speeches short as groom would rather party with his bride everyone and keep the spotlight off of him. Both MOHs gave lovely speeches. Then came the BM, who then passed the mic to the first GM, who then proceeded to pass the mic along to the others. The bridesmaids starting freaking out and thankfully the fathers of the couple got up, did a quick, thanks for coming, we love you both, let's eat and be merry, and wrapped it up because what should have been maybe 10 minutes tops between the three speeches was going on 40... I know this isn't the worst out there, but 40 minutes of speeches when you're hungry and the bar runs out of water and soda so you are left with very little patience. Story 29. My cousin's wedding reception. I was about nine, so my mom took me and one of my brothers home before the real fun started. While I was there, the MOH was absolutely hammered before entering the fire hall, grabbed a $500 bottle of rum that was supposed to be raffled off to help with the couple's honeymoon, and proceeded to chug a good third of the bottle. Had some rando teenager from the bride's family, I'm related to the groom, try to hit on me for most of the reception because he refused to believe I was as young as I said I was. I've always been pretty tall. What I wasn't there for but heard about in the morning. DJ's extremely inebriated ex-boyfriend showed up and harassed him, the DJ, for most of the night. Guests were fine with him until they started verbally screaming at each other. 
Then my, also extremely inebriated, family tried to shoo the X out. Got him outside the fire hall. X took a swing at someone. Pissed off my drunk redneck cousins who took swings back. X runs right into the road, gets hit by a car, and flies into a ditch. He was okay, minus a broken arm, broken bruised ribs, and was screaming about my homophobic family ganging up on him for no reason. Story 30. Happened to my GF now wife. Good friend's wedding about 25 years ago. We were young and loved to party. Bride and groom left the reception early to head out for the honeymoon. A group of us took mushrooms and we re-drinking hard. Close friend was a huge wrestling fan, like WWF. He was dancing with my GF. Out of absolutely nowhere, he grabs my girl, picks her up, and legit suplexed her on the dance floor. Her head hit the floor and she was lying there in a spaghetti-strapped LBD with her eyes fluttering. I put both my hands around his neck and tried with every ounce of strength I had to choke the life out of him. Friends calmed us down and he was escorted home. It was the most insane thing I've seen at a wedding. Story 31. About 15 years ago, I catered a weekend-long wedding. Two rich families making their kids marry to join the businesses together or some such. The groom really didn't want to. He was in love with someone else, but his parents pressured him into doing it. After the wedding, dinner, and party, the bride and groom went back to the hotel. He packed his bags, drove to the airport, and left the country. When his parents finally got in touch with him the next day, he told them he went through with the wedding like they wanted, and now they could fudge off because he wasn't coming back. None of the guests were told. When asked where the bride and groom were for the rest of the weekend, everyone was told they were busy, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But all the staff knew. The family spent over $750,000 on the wedding. Church, decorations, food, venue rental, flying over 200 different guests in and paying for their hotels. Story 32. I was a plus one to a wedding about two years ago. I went with this guy I was seeing, and it was one of his buddies he played baseball in college with. We were at the back table by the bar with his other old teammates. During the best man made of honor speeches, the MOH was talking about a deceased family member. I couldn't really hear because at our table, one guy vomited all over the pregnant girl next to him and they were fighting. Another guy and his date were making out and he was hands all up in her dress. And one guy was talking on the phone loud as heck. I was so embarrassed and I didn't even know these people. I smacked my hand on the table and said, have any of you ever left your homes ever? After we are silently me and my date kind of just lingered around and stayed away from the table. I can't believe people actually act that way. Story 33. My cousin, the bride, has some kind of disease. Nothing immediately terminal, but I think it's one of those things where you slowly deteriorate, unfortunately. So when she was getting married, they wanted to make it a huge event. My family is scattered across the country, but we all made sure to make it there, especially since my aunt and uncle put so much time, work, and money into planning it. So, we're all at this fancy country club with at least 200 people and halfway through the party, the bride disappeared. After a while, I go to the bathroom and there she is, puking her guts out because she was taking shots of tequila since the morning when getting ready for the day. She never recovered that night, so the toasts were never made and the cake had no cutting ceremony, and my aunt and uncle were understandably pissed. When I was my best friend's MOH years later, I made sure to monitor the bride's alcohol intake just in case. Story 34. 1. I owned a sound company that did over 200 weddings a year. I have a wedding coming up on Saturday. On Thursday, it gets canceled! The bride is boning the best man. Oops, no problem. The new couple who don't want to lose any deposits book their wedding two months later. The reception starts with everyone going to their seats. No intermingling. They eat their meals without a word. Then after the first dance, there is a stampede to the front doors and the place empties. I was tearing down at 10.30 p.m. instead of 1 a.m. Two, groom disappears with X until 12.30 a.m. When he returns, well, you can guess what happened. The next day, bride files for divorce. I quickly deposited the check. Story 35. A white friend had a long-term girlfriend. The man's parents were renewing their vows because they got papal permission to get married in a Catholic church. The woman was specifically disinvited. During the vows, a cat showed up from who knows where and walked up the aisle mowing. Story 36. A co-worker's wedding at a very nice country club golf course. Her friends, a couple M and F early 30s maybe, dropped acid at the reception, started throwing glasses and yelling at random people. The chick tried to drive off and the bride's dad tried to stop her. She hit both cars next to her and he finally pulled her out of the car. She tries biting him so he pins her down until the cops arrive. Cops get there and demand he release this tiny girl. The dad does and she runs to bite the cop. He pins her down and she's screaming and kicking and spitting. That was the craziest cow I've seen at a wedding and I still tell that story. Story 37. I used to work at a hotel doing weddings and saw many things. Highlights include the wedding party minus the bride 
all breaking into the spa and sitting in the jacuzzi in all their clothes. A man who got extremely drunk and drew cartoons all over the expensive tablecloth and then asked to buy it. And one time a three-legged dog broke in and wouldn't let any guests out of the room we were in. Story 38. Best friend from growing up got married on an extremely hot summer day, probably around 105 when the reception started at 4 p.m. Some poor old lady in the crowd had a heat stroke, but it's okay, the bride and groom were both medical students, as were about half of their friends in the crowd, and another 30 doctors and nurses were at the wedding. So you had this massive gaggle of doctors and nurses all trying to help out this poor old lady before they realized it was better to just let two ER docs handle it and went back to snacking on past apps. Story 39. The groom went into the forest to talk with an acquaintance of his. I know, bad idea. After about 30 minutes, only the groom emerged from the forest, badly beaten and covered in blood, and there was no sign of the acquaintance. After many searched the forest, the acquaintance was also found beaten, and a quarter of the guests chased and confronted the assailants. It was chaotic. Story 40. I went to a wedding where the whole thing was. The bride was visibly pregnant. Not a big deal. The flower girl was the daughter of the bride and the best man. The maid of honor was very pregnant and fainted during the ceremony, so her husband, the photographer, got almost no photos of the wedding. It was an odd one. Story 41. Groom and bride starts to drunkenly make out with two guests. The groom starts alone in timidly dance with those two guests and groping them to love songs. The bride and groom's young kids are present to witness it. It was awkward, uncomfortable as hell, and I don't think either of them remembered it the day after. Story 42. I... 34M caught the garter, and a 16-year-old girl whom I did not know caught the bouquet. A bunch of the wedding guests were loudly pressuring me to get up under the girl's dress and put the garter on her leg. She was maybe a little on the spectrum and didn't understand what was going on for a minute. Then when someone explained to her what the people were yelling at me to do, she looked like she was going to faint from shock and horror at the idea of it. I was like, absolutely nope, and gave the garter back to the bride. The put-it-on-her-leg contingent was mostly boomer-age ladies. Yeah. Story 43. When I was at a wedding reception for my now ex-in-laws, the groom got extremely drunk. The bridesmaids thought it was a good idea to get him to stand on a chair in front of the head table and strip. His groomsmen got to him as he was getting and caught him as he was pulling his boxers down with his pants around his ankles. They grabbed the waistband of his boxers and held them up, tipped him over onto their shoulders, and carried him out. We didn't see him for the rest of the ceremony. The bride was furious at her bridesmaids and was screaming at them while they were laughing about it. Story 44. The groom's mom was suddenly laying down at the base of some steps on the dance floor, screaming bloody murder, yelling, My hip! My hip! Someone calls 911, and everyone's falling over each other to see if she's okay. Except for her kids and the bride, who all were furiously rolling their eyes at each other. Turns out this is just one of the many things that she pulls when she isn't being the center of attention. She took her ambulance ride, got her x-rays, and was completely fine, but was very upset that they kept the party going without her instead of canceling out of respect for her injury. Let me tell you, I have never seen someone more stubborn to keep a party going than that bride. She even opened the bar up for the rest of the night since the faker was footing the bill. Story 45. Many years ago, I worked for a catering company. It was a position I had for about 10 years. There were many things that happened during that time at wedding receptions that were beyond the normal. Let's see. Once, I accidentally walked in on the groom banging one of the bridesmaids in the ladies' room. They didn't even bother to shut the stall door. Another time, I caught one of the bridesmaids giving one of the groomsmen, not her boyfriend, BTW, a hand job behind one of our high-top bars. The bartender had taken a break, and they seized the opportunity to hide a little. A very, very little? They stopped when I walked up, and the woman somewhat apologized as she wiped her hands with the bar-top tablecloth. Yes, it was quickly removed. There was the reception where one of the groomsmen had a tiny video camera mounted to the top of his shoe, and he was sticking it under the dresses of any woman he could get close to. He was eventually escorted out by the police. Then, there was the wedding where the grandfathers, both in their mid to late 80s at least, of the bride and groom apparently hated each other. Everyone tried to keep them separated through the evening. At some point, though, they ended up at the bar at the same time, and it turned into a slow-motion World War III. They were throwing the slowest, lightest punches but still ended up on the ground wrestling around until they were dragged apart. Lastly, there was a huge wedding between the grandchildren of a mafia boss from Chicago and one from NY. We had never seen so many people, non-law enforcement that is, discreetly packing in one place. The older boss guys said very little, even to each other, but every little hand gesture meant something. Their security, or whatever you'd call it, knew exactly what a finger raise or snap meant immediately. The room was split with each family staying away from the other family. 
They didn't speak or mingle until both grandfathers gave a little hand gesture. After that, it was like one big, huge family party. Story 46. The couple had a friend do their videography. And after the ceremony at the end of the reception, the videographer let the couple know he had forgotten to turn the camera on, so nothing was recorded. The groom lost his mind and hit the videographer. The sisters of the bride then used that as their opportunity to share their distaste for the groom, saying things like, it's not too late to leave to the bride. It was a real cow show, but the couple is still happily married today, 12 years later. Story 47. Here's a bride and groom with really bad luck. The bride's father had been ill for a long time and he wanted them to go ahead with the wedding no matter what. He passed away the morning of the wedding. During the ceremony, the bride turned around and the back of her dress got caught on the altar cloth, which had a candle on it. The candle tipped over and caught the altar on fire. To top it all off, during their honeymoon, thieves broke into their house, robbed them, and then burned their house down to cover their tracks. Story 48. I was at a mixed Dutch-Russian wedding. After the vows, they served us champagne. The Dutch guests had one, maybe two. Most of the Russians had at least four. Right after that, we spotted multiple of the Russian guests just taking whole bottles and walking around casually sipping champagne like it was lemonade. And of course, switching to the stronger stuff after dinner. Let's say they hold their liquor very well. It was an interesting wedding. Story 49. I used to have an office in the county courthouse, and there were always a couple of courthouse pastors hanging out, taking turns marrying folks who chose to have their ceremony there in the rotunda after getting their marriage licenses. One bride and groom turned up with a small group of friends and family in full wedding attire. Bride in a lacy white wedding gown, bridesmaids, flower bouquets, tuxes for the men, formal gowns for the women, the whole nine yards. They got their license, made arrangements with the pastor whose turn it was, and off to the rotunda they went. The ceremony went off without a hitch and friends and family gathered around the couple to congratulate them. And an absolute brawl broke out. The bride started chasing the groom through the rotunda and down the main courthouse hallway while shrieking and beating him with her bouquet. Rose petals were flying through the air. Women in formal gowns were throwing punches, pulling hair and grappling with each other on the marble floor. Men in tuxedos were alternately trying to break up the fight between the women while throwing punches at each other. It was wild. The groom eventually made it to the doors at the other end of the hall and ran outside, followed by the bride, now beating him with her bouquet of rose stems. The rest scrambled to follow, helped along by courthouse security who were responding to the melee. The pastor was watching all of this go down with his jaw hanging. I mumbled something like, I don't give that one long. He responded with a sigh and said, I think I'm going to just do them a solid and forget to register this. Whereupon he opened the record book he carried with him and drew a line through something. I've always wondered what happened to them. It was certainly the shortest marriage I've even seen. Story 50. 100 extra people showed up who hadn't RSVP'd, some of whom weren't even invited. The catering hall tried to be cool and accommodate everyone, but there simply wasn't enough space, tables, or food for them all. By the end, they had little slices of ham into cubes being served as an order V. I don't feel like looking up the real spelling. Edit. I have been informed that it is in fact spelled horse to ovaries. Story 51. At my brother's wedding, there was a guest on the bride's side who got absolutely plastered drunk and stayed that way the entire night. Well, after the venue moved us out of the reception area and into the hall, they had a buffet table set up for us. The guest in question was still wasted beyond repair and was next in line at the buffet table. She passed out and face planted directly into the table, broke the table in half, broke some of the equipment that was being used to serve food, ruined all the food, and knocked over a wall that nearly fell on top of the bride. And if she, the bride, had been standing like two feet over, probably would have ended up in the emergency room that night. Story 52. Okay, in my country, conservative religious country, the wedding was all good and nice until everyone around a room where the bride and groom were having. The mother of the groom goes in and brings out a white cloth with what the blood of virginity of the bride and passing it around while singing with the music and shouting in happiness. Story 53. 1960s. The bride had indulged in one too many bleach and permanent wave sessions, and her chemically deep-fried hair broke off 18 inch from her scalp a couple of weeks before her wedding. Undaunted, she bought some wigs and proceeded with her very formal wedding. However, as she was almost to the altar, with the flower girls and ring bearer preceding her and three young nephews carrying her lengthy train, the train wranglers got into a shoving match, and one of them yanked on her veil. Yes, dear reader, the veil that was firmly pinned into the wig that was covering 14 inch of stubble. Wig and veil go flying backwards. Train wranglers start yelling at each other to deflect the blame. Mothers of train wranglers swoop in to grab up their offspring. The flower girls and ring bearer keep bearing and flinging petals. The waiting wedding party is struggling to not pee their pants. And the bride makes a 180 turn, retrieves her wig and veil, 
stuffs them onto her head, and finishes the ceremony only slightly askew. It was marvelous! Story 54. Well, I don't know if this qualifies because it's not really crazy and I thought it was awesome. I attended a wedding and for the food they had a modest small pasta buffet which was fine. When it came time for cake, they revealed a large stack of maple bar donuts which just so happened to be my favorite. I thought it was rad but others were kind of perplexed. But the kicker was when the night ended and you walked to your car in the parking lot, they had hired a hot dog vendor. And not just some guy with a grill a legit hot dog vendor that you would find in a big city. He had all the fixings. It was the best wedding I've ever been to, but I don't think everyone appreciated it as much as me. Story 55. The night before my own wedding, we were playing Monopoly. I caught my brother's wife cheating several times and called her out. I never explicitly said she was cheating, but let it seem like I thought it was a simple mistake and left her a way out to avoid drama. Well, she didn't like that and grew more rude to me as the game went on. This went on until everyone was tired of the tension she was creating, and we decided to end the game early. She declared herself the winner as she had the most money at that moment and was gloating about how she always wins. I told her there was no winner since we ended the game early. This sent her on a tirade calling me all kinds of names and cursing me out and she had to be physically dragged away kicking and screaming by my brother. The next day at the wedding and reception, she refused to interact with me or my new wife at all. Although I did overhear her make rude comments about us taking too long with pictures. The day after when everyone was leaving the cabin, we had rented for the event, she still hadn't spoken to us and honked the car horn at my brother to hurry up when we were saying our goodbyes. Another thing that just kind of adds to the kind of person she is. She wore the loudest hot pink latex dress I have ever seen for the wedding. We hadn't put out a dress code for anyone but the wedding party, but man, did she make us wish we had. Story 56. Pales in comparison to some of the responses. One was a 20-minute long prayer by the bride's grandfather at the end of the ceremony. It was December in Delaware, and the ceremony was outside. Everyone was freezing. At the same wedding, the bride's dad made a speech where he apologized for working all the time while she was a kid and missing her childhood, and then said he was so happy she was marrying a man exactly like him. Will, less than a year later, they are separated because her husband works all the time was never home, and he was jealous that she made more money than him. Yikes! Story 57. Two teenagers got married. At reception, they gave a toast to everyone for being there, and they announced they were expecting having not had close relationship and were both still virgins, because she sat on the toilet seat after he had released his tension on it. Not surprisingly, nobody believed them. Also, not surprisingly, she sat on the seat twice more. Post-divorce, both still claim the spunk-covered toilet seat was to blame. I never use public washrooms, just in case. Haha. <laughs> Story 58. I did wedding photography for like five years. These stick out. The bride that refused to have her photos taken didn't want to be there at all. M.I.L. put it together. She did get married. November 11th, 11 wedding, most requested date ever, and the bride no-showed to the wedding. I go in the bathroom at the church just as people start to arrive. Pee, wash hands, walk out as a relative, aunt, I believe, goes into the restroom. When she exits, I went back in to check my clothes or makeup or something, and that woman cow in the toilet and left it there. At the beginning of wedding! So all of her relatives could smell it. I flushed it. It wasn't clogged. She's just demented. Extremely long entire mass during a wedding. A bridesmaid fainted. Don't lock your knees. That's not a myth. Vulgar games, absurdly drunk grooms. One time a bride and guests. One time a male videographer was told very clearly, many times about staying away from the women's side of the venue because it was an extremely religious reception where women would be removing their hijabs and partying together. This MF walks completely around the venue to the women's side and walks through as the bride is standing there, uncovered. On her wedding day, he saw her like that. So rude. Also, this same wedding was the only time I saw a dowry being paid during a ceremony. And in the ceremony, the woman didn't participate. The husband and father signed a paper and talked, and the bride just sat there across the room. They seemed like a very nice couple, though. Story 59. My childhood friend has borderline personality disorder. We always got along because I just accepted it, and she felt comfortable with me. It's a 20 years later, and she still is a complete psycho with men she dates. She landed a news broadcaster, and he left her because of her crazy so she stalked him and his new fiancé for years. Now she's an elementary school teacher dating a trucker, but constantly sending me messages about how her stalking of the other guy is going. I'd go over to hang out, but it was still the same psycho behavior she did 20 years ago. The wedding was in a barn. She acted like a normal person and acted happy. There was zero drama from her. It was so jarring, surreal. The MIL had a breakdown because she knew the crazy her son was marrying into. But the bride was acting like she was the star in a romantic comedy. It was just disturbing. Story 60. I was at a friend's wedding party and I asked this girl if she wanted to dance. 
She immediately threw her drink on my shirt on purpose and walked away. I didn't know this girl and I have no idea what I did to deserve that. My friends who were right next to me were just as baffled. Story 61. I worked at a wedding venue one summer, so I have stories. But the most thing I saw was the event coordinator getting pissed on by the bride's father. The venue was two stories with a balcony. The balcony overlooked the parking lot. The event coordinator was watching a female employee walk to her car at the end of the night. The bride's dad was out on the balcony and decided he had to pour out the water, so he whipped it out and started poured water on the cars below and the event coordinator. I was on the lower floor cleaning up from a separate event and saw it happen through the windows. Story 62. 20-year wedding professional, how much time do you have? Name a trope or cliche, I've seen it. Bride cheating with groomsmen. Groom and bride drunken fight. ODing in the bathroom of his suite at the hotel, father of the bride, throwing up from drinking too much bride, knocking herself out during a line dance because she slipped on beer on the dance floor and hit her head grandpa of the bride having a heart attack before the dance and eventually dying that night. Bridesmaids flashing, hooking up, kids getting drunk, fights. Seen them all. It's a wild industry, especially where I live. Rural Midwest, very desolate, and weddings are seen as a community-wide excuse to let it rip and get wild. Story 63. Well, my sister's third wedding was a picnic at a fire hall with a groom who had a waist-length ponytail festively braided with leather by the bride to match his do-rag and a larger, middle-aged bride with a wide-open decollage and no bra, which no doubt facilitated her giving a lap dance to a guest later on and unintentionally and unironically twinned with the groom's best ceremonial ride-free t-shirt. We all watched breathlessly for the groom's fake teeth to fall out, again, and I met a nice couple the bride introduced me to, as the ones that were there the night she first picked him up. Unfortunately, the groom's father couldn't be there as he was in jail awaiting trial for a murder. His wife. Story 64. At one wedding, someone got super drunk and fell backwards into a very large glass window floor-to-ceiling windows and six-ish FT wide, maybe. Window broke, and a giant shard came crashing down and just missed the guy. But the way he was laying there, no one could tell initially, and we all thought he might have gotten impaled like some horror movie scene. Another wedding. It was actually the wedding next door that this happened at. The men in the wedding party all had fancy walking stick skeins. The groom got so drunk and couldn't find his. He started accusing his groomsmen of having stole it, and a huge fright broke out between them all. Cops were called. Huge scene! The father of the groom ended up being so stressed from it all that he had a heart attack or something, and they had to call 911 for an ambulance, and he was rushed to the hospital. The cane ended up being in the bridal suite where the groom had stored it earlier, so he wouldn't lose it. Story 65. One of the bartenders decided to take something before her shift started, I guess because she was getting orders and filling cups with nothing than giving people the empty cups. She was visibly out of it, so after a couple complaints, she was told to go home and the wedding coordinator ended up serving for the rest of the night.